Coke versus Pepsi. This legendary battle is not just about two beverages, but a clash of titans in the business realm. Surprisingly, PepsiCo, with its diverse portfolio including Frito-Lay and Quaker Oats, stands almost double the size of Coca-Cola in terms of sales. But here's a twist. A significant portion of Pepsi's revenue comes from its food brands, not just beverages. On the other hand, Coca-Cola remains steadfast in its focus on drinks, commanding a larger slice of the beverage market. Today, we're diving into the epic Coke versus Pepsi rivalry. It's more than just business. It's a battle in the world of beverages. What happens when these giants face off in key soda categories? How do they stack up in other drinks? And most importantly, who leads outside the soda scene? Let's find out. Kicking off with colas, let's look at the storied competition between Coke and Pepsi. It all began with Coca-Cola, a creation of John Pemberton in 1886. Not long after, in a move to challenge Coca-Cola's growing popularity, Caleb Bradham introduced Pepsi-Cola. However, both creators didn't enjoy the fruits of their labor. Pemberton sold his recipe for just $2,300, a figure that pales in comparison to Coca-Cola's current value. Similarly, Bradham's financial missteps led him back to his pharmacy roots. The real rise to fame for both brands came under their subsequent owners. By the 1930s, Coca-Cola had significantly outpaced Pepsi, but Pepsi wasn't far behind. Strategically aiming to capture Coca-Cola's customer base, a notable move came during the Great Depression when Pepsi offered 12-ounce bottles at 5 cents, twice the Coke volume for the same price. This deal, promoted through the first-ever national radio jingle, won over many customers. Fast forward to the 1960s, Pepsi began courting the youth with their Pepsi Generation campaign, casting Coke as the drink of an older generation. This marketing shift further dented Coca-Cola's market share. The 1970s brought the Pepsi Challenge, a blind taste test that often favored Pepsi, potentially due to its sweeter profile. These campaigns, especially during the 1980s, nearly brought Pepsi on par with Coke. Coca-Cola, touting itself as the original cola, subtly branded Pepsi as an imitation. In an unexpected move, Coca-Cola tweaked their formula to taste sweeter, launching New Coke. The public didn't welcome this change, causing an uproar that Pepsi capitalized on through advertisements. Coca-Cola soon returned to their classic formula, which actually boosted their sales significantly. Despite Pepsi's valiant efforts, Coca-Cola has consistently led as the more favored cola, maintaining its position as the top player in this competitive field. Let's shift gears to diet colas and explore how they've shaped the Coke versus Pepsi rivalry. Back in the 60s, diet sodas were the new big thing in the beverage world, thanks to Diet Right from RC Cola. This trend nudged Coca-Cola and Pepsi to step into the diet soda market. Coca-Cola took a cautious approach to protect its brand identity and introduced Tab, a different diet soda, instead of a direct diet Coke. Pepsi, on the other hand, boldly introduced Diet Pepsi a year later. Surprisingly, Coca-Cola's strategy worked and Tab initially outsold Diet Pepsi. Fast forward to 1982, in a bold move to regain market share, Coca-Cola launched Diet Coke, marking only the second time the Coke name was used on a new product. This move paid off tremendously, making Diet Coke one of the most successful product launches in history. In a striking turn of events, there was even a time starting in 2011 when Diet Coke sales surpassed those of regular Pepsi. In the Diet Cola category, it's clear that Coca-Cola has managed to stay ahead of Pepsi. The next round is on lemon-lime soda. The story begins in the 1960s, when the popularity of 7-Up, made by another company, prompted both Coca-Cola and Pepsi to create their own lemon-lime sodas. Pepsi introduced Team, while Coca-Cola brought in Sprite. It quickly became clear that Sprite was the more favored option among the two. When the 1980s arrived, Pepsi needed to respond to Sprite's growing dominance. They phased out Team and launched Slice, notable for its 10% real fruit juice content. This was a fresh idea at the time and attracted a lot of attention from consumers. Coca-Cola, however, wasn't far behind. They already had a strong footing with Minute Maid, 
a well-known juice brand. Leveraging this, they introduced a Minute Maid soda range, also infused with 10% fruit juice. This move forced consumers to choose between the newcomer slice and the established Minute Maid brand. As time went on, the appeal of fruit juice and sodas waned. By the end of the 1980s, these sodas no longer contained fruit juice. Slice, without its fruit juice angle, struggled to keep pace with Sprite. Pepsi eventually replaced Slice with Sierra Mist in 2000, but it too found it hard to compete against Sprite. In a recent attempt in 2023, Pepsi launched Starry as the latest contender against Sprite. Throughout these years, Pepsi has faced ongoing challenges in making a significant impact against Coca-Cola in the lemon-lime soda market. Shifting to cherry colas, we find another chapter in the Coke versus Pepsi battle. In the midst of the cola competition in 1985, Coca-Cola made a strategic move by introducing Cherry Coke. This was a significant step, as it was only the third product to be branded under the iconic Coke name. Not long after, Pepsi decided to expand its existing slice product line to include a variety of fruit flavors, with cherry being a prominent addition. Despite this expansion, the cherry-flavored slice didn't maintain its presence for long. Recognizing the need for change due to Slice's underwhelming performance, Pepsi launched Wild Cherry Pepsi in just a couple of years and phased out the cherry flavor from the Slice lineup. The battle of cherry colas might not be as long-winded as other aspects of this rivalry. However, in this particular flavor face-off, it appears that Coca-Cola once again managed to take the lead over Pepsi. Last but not least, let's turn to the citrus category, epitomized by drinks like Mountain Dew. When Pepsi acquired Mountain Dew in 1964, it was just a modest brand, but they quickly turned it into a sensation with sales multiplying rapidly. Initially, Mountain Dew's marketing played up its Tennessee heritage, but in the 1970s, the brand shifted its focus to a younger, more dynamic demographic making it the fastest growing soft drink in the nation. By the 1990s, Mountain Dew had become the leading non-cola soft drink in the US, bolstered by its association with the X Games. Its success caught Coca-Cola's attention, leading to the 1997 debut of Surge. Touted as a potential Mountain Dew killer, Surge was a vibrant green drink packed with caffeine and marketed for its energetic and adventurous spirit. Coca-Cola went all in with Surge, backing it with a high-budget Super Bowl commercial and extensive promotions, highlighting it as their most ambitious launch since Diet Coke. Pepsi's reaction to Surge was a bold bring it on, reflecting their confidence. That confidence was well-placed. Surge struggled to find its footing and was largely phased out in just five years, while Mountain Dew continued its successful run. Coca-Cola tried again in 2005 with Vault, a drink similar to Mountain Dew, but this too failed to make a lasting impact. In this high-energy, citrus-flavored segment, Pepsi's Mountain Dew stands out as the clear victor, having established itself as a perennial favorite. As a bonus, we're expanding our look into the Coke and Pepsi rivalry to include a variety of non-soda beverages where they've fiercely competed. Starting with iced tea, PepsiCo created a partnership with Lipton in 1991, launching the popular Brisk and Pure Life tea brands. Coca-Cola responded in 1992 by teaming up with Nestle to produce Nesty and Nescafe, though this alliance ended in 2018. Besides, Coca-Cola has Gold Peak Tea, Fuse, and Honest Tea in its portfolio. Then there's bottled water. Pepsi entered this market in the late 1990s with Aquafina, which quickly rose to the top in sales. Coca-Cola countered with Dasani, which also gained popularity. Additionally, in 2007, Coca-Cola added vitamin water and smart water to its lineup. Recently, the focus shifted to sparkling water, with Pepsi launching Bubbly in 2018 and Coca-Cola following with AHA in 2020. The juice market is another battlefield. Coca-Cola has owned Minute Maid since 1960 and introduced Fruitopia later, which was eventually discontinued. 
Pepsi made a significant move in 1998 by acquiring Tropicana for $3.3 billion. Tropicana focused on non-concentrated juices, contrasting with Minute Maid's offerings. Coca-Cola introduced Simply Orange, but sold off Tropicana in 2021 for the same amount they paid. Sports drinks add to this rivalry. Coca-Cola came up with Powerade in the 1980s to compete with Gatorade. Pepsi tried to enter this market in the 1990s with all sport, but it couldn't rival Gatorade's dominance. Eventually, Pepsi acquired Quaker Oats, gaining control of Gatorade. In a recent move in 2021, Coca-Cola bought Body Armor for $5.6 billion, intensifying the competition in this segment. In the energy drink market, Coca-Cola purchased a stake in Monster in 2015, while Pepsi acquired Rockstar for $3.85 billion in 2020, marking yet another high-stakes competition between the two giants. So, what are your thoughts on this extensive rivalry between Coke and Pepsi? Share your thoughts in the comment below, and don't forget to subscribe for more captivating business insights.